The Forest is one of those games in which I was interested in, but that interest comes with reservations. I knew that it would be similar to Subnautica in many ways, which was a game I had enjoyed greatly, but the main problem is that The Forest at first glance appears to be focused on base building and especially defending that base rather than exploration. I would find out later that this assumption couldn't be further from the truth, but at first it seemed that way to me. I tried to read and watch as little about the games I'm about to play as possible. The reason for that lies within the fact that that to me the story is king and I really fear spoilers. If a game's story is spoiled, all that is left are the game mechanics and to me that's just not what makes the game worth playing alone. In my opinion, games are just as movies and books. They're all mediums to tell a story. The best one in fact would be the games because you experience said story from a much closer perspective. This is also the reason why I wanted to know more about the game before committing to it. And unfortunately most videos I watched online were about building a base, surviving and mastering your environment. Due to the extensive tools given to the player, one can build bases of epic proportions and this appeals to a lot of players way more than the actual story of the game. It's a good old sandbox principle and it works as intended. Everyone can enjoy it and once you get used to the gameplay mechanics, you can have a very relaxing afternoon chopping down trees and building a house or two. Good as that may be, it was simply not attractive enough at first for me, so I decided to skip it. A week later, just by chance, I read a comment on Reddit where a person mentioned he thoroughly enjoyed the forest and was amazed about the captivating story. That post had hundreds of upvotes, indicating that many others agreed with him. Now I had to know. The game starts with you and your son on a plane, all is well until the plane has some kind of malfunction and crashes on an island. You survive the crash landing but are knocked out and can't do anything as you watch your son being abducted by a man covered in red paint. Later on, you awaken to find that most of the passengers are missing or lying dead around you. This is where I want to talk about the protagonist. His name is Eric LeBlanc, he's a survival specialist and a TV star, something like a more manly and deadly version of Bear Grylls if you will. His wife has passed away some time before the game starts. We know all of this from a magazine article about him which we saw on the plane before it crashed. Now his son is gone, his fate unclear. Eric finds himself in the middle of a forest of an unknown island with nothing but an axe which he found sticking out of the chest of a stewardess after the plane crash. He's a silent protagonist. While this is a bit cliche, it's a good one. The game gives you a to-do list in your notebook, your most important objective being to find your son Timmy. That notebook essentially is all that you have. It houses all of your crafting recipes. The game is designed to feel very realistic. There is no hand holding here and that is simultaneously its biggest strength and flaw. It lacks tutorials, the only thing you will find in your notebook is an instruction to build a shelter and a fireplace. That's it. This creates a steep learning curve for people who are new to this game type and the potential for frustration. Honestly, the best thing to do is watch a few YouTube videos for beginners. Naturally, there's also a second option. That option is to simply learn by doing and experimenting, but this really isn't the way the game is meant to be played. I know some people will be shocked about that last statement, but let me explain. Eric is a survival specialist. He knows all of that stuff. He knows which mushrooms are edible and which poisonous. The same for the berries. He knows how to cut down a tree, how to collect sap, how to build a house out of logs, twigs and stones. The player on the other hand does not. So if you enter the game and you start tasting everything and getting sick, being in unsure about everything you do, you are definitely not playing the way Eric would have if he had control over himself. This is why I strongly advise new players to check a few early tutorial videos videos on YouTube. It makes the game so much more accessible without spoiling anything and it will help give you a good start which is very important. The game suffers from another problem and that's the dissonance between the players and the characters motivations. Here there are no restrictions placed on you so you can actually do whatever you want rather than what you should be playing. So if you want to simply enjoy building the game will not punish you for it. However if you are like me you will want to act in the same way your protagonist would. His son is missing so he will build hunt, scavenge only as much as he needs in order to survive and find his son. The character was not thriving in the forest, he was racing against time to find his missing son, that's all. His task is not to actually live there happily ever after, although your notebook will tell you to build something that feels like home. So during my first playthrough I was building fairly little and focusing mostly on exploration because that's what a father would do in my opinion. He would be frantic, furious, a man on a mission to recover 
cover the only thing that is left in his life, that's our protagonist here. And as I was playing in this way I was blissfully ignorant of where to go and what to do. I would wander the forest and search blindly, it felt like I was doing everything wrong, but as a matter of fact this is exactly what I was supposed to do. During my search I encountered the local savages, I already knew there were people here because of the many effigies I found, but once I reached the village it became clear that these people are not just savage, they're also cannibals. I wasn't getting any answers from them so they had to die. This is where we come to the next point of this review, the combat. Your character can craft several weapons and find several other ones. While not a real soldier of any kind, I must say that Eric kills with brutal efficiency. Controlling him in combat is satisfying. While simple, it works very well. The player has a light attack, a heavy one and of course a block so that you can block incoming attacks. The enemies are no pushovers, at first you will only encounter normal cannibals, male and female. What's interesting is that if you kill the female ones first, all the males will become enraged and attack with even greater ferocity. Some patrols will even have a leader. Killing him will sometimes make the rest of his group run away, but it can also enrage them. Even at this early stage of the game, the combat is very strategic. Later on, you will encounter skinny cannibals, which move more quickly than these and can be an even greater threat. Lastly, you will encounter mutants. Those are really tough to kill, but when dispatched, can be skinned and then added to your armor for additional protection. Combat is an important part of the game, but it can be avoided in some cases. The game features stealth mechanics which work well when used properly. Just as with everything else, stealth feels quite realistic here too. Most of the time you will be noticed simply because you have your lighter on or were not in a dark enough place, but it can often be advantageous to try to avoid a battle when possible. Since the game does not hold your hand while playing, you will have to figure out many things on your own. I didn't know for example that you could burn the bodies of the dead in order to acquire their bones, which can then be converted into armor, or that you can ride a turtle shell down the hill. There are many such things which you almost likely miss until you see a video online or just figure it out by sheer luck. And while I generally dislike that, I think it somehow fits the theme of the game. Depending on how well you manage, one of two things will happen. Either you will die, or you will stumble upon a cave as you wander around. If you do die, you will awaken strung up upside down in a cave under the main cannibal village. In any case, you will be introduced to the cave system in the game as this is where the forest narrative truly begins. The caves are where you find most of the abducted passengers, clues, drawings your son has made, and other cryptic clues that you will try to decipher at first but probably fail just as I did. It will feel like your son is somewhere around, but you can never be sure where. The caves are many and most are connected between each other. It's also where the game's tone darkens even more. And I mean this in two ways. One, the caves are dark. They're much darker than when you are outside at night. At first you will only have a lighter which barely provides any light. Later on you will find a flashlight which again barely illuminates your surroundings. The second thing is that this is where you will find some gruesome scenes. A lot of gore is displayed here. Dismembered people skulls, limbs, etc. At one point I saw tennis players whose stomachs had been opened up and filled with tennis balls. But that's not the worst thing you will find down here, the caves often have enemies in them. This is one of the few games which managed to fill my heart with anticipation and horror in a genuine way. You see the reason why it can be so scary is because it's once again very realistic. The darkness is not a cheap way of scaring the player, it's plausible. If you've ever been in a truly dark place with nothing but a lighter, you will know how difficult it is to see further than a hand length in any direction. The flashlight provides a somewhat better view forward, but not so much around you. Having to sneak and fight in a small dark space can be a very scary and disorienting experience. But the developer knew that, so they placed a crucial mechanic in the game. Each dead enemy in the caves will stay dead. If you are careful and cautious, you can effectively clear a cave of enemies and even build small things like skull lamps in there to illuminate them. This is what I did in the first cave I found, and it became my home. There is no safer place in the game than a cave which has been cleared of enemies. You know nothing will ever spawn in sight or follow you in. The caves are the most dangerous and safest place in this game at the same time. And I absolutely love that. They are also full of lots of useful items and even weapons. They will be the way to advance the story as well. You will find written files, photographs, videotapes as well as bodies. 
The game will never tell you what is happening outright, but it will try to show you and you will start to piece things together the further you advance through the story, although it's really hard to tell when you advance and when you don't. By the end everything will make a lot of sense. I would love to go more in depth about the story here because it is actually a good one and in the end even provides you with a choice, a very difficult one at that. But I want for people to be able to experience the game for themselves so I will not be spoiling anything here. It is amazing how with each cave you clear you become more confident and brave. Not only do you upgrade your weapon and learn how to fight enemies better, but you also learn to understand the darkness which surrounds you and exploit it. It will never be your friend, that much for sure, but it can be a tool when used properly. My advice is to play the game at night and with headphones. It will be easier to see because there's no external light to make the screen less visible and hearing will be your most important sense when your sight is so limited. It's true that when one sense fails, all others are sharpened and that's really the case here. In my second second playthrough I decided to give building a shot and make a large settlement right at the cannibal main village. It was a very difficult start since the attacks were constant and they would rarely have a chance to actually build or collect materials, but given enough time I was able to establish myself there and it was a ton of fun. Clearly playing the game in this way is a reason enough for a second playthrough. The forest turned out to be a hidden gem. I wish the character was not a silent protagonist that would have increased my levels of immersion and I also wish there was some sort of tutorial to explain some of the things you need to do in the game. They could have made it like a separate thing divided from the actual game, perhaps like a playable episode of Eric's show where you get to build some things, gather some materials and eat some berries and mushrooms while listening to a talking protagonist explain which ones are edible and which ones are poisonous. That would have been a good idea, they could have even made a few Bear Grylls jokes about drinking your own piss, but I digress. I enjoyed my hours with this game greatly. The fear was excellent, the victories were epic and the story was well told and presented considering the you know the kind of game you're playing. The building works really well and overall the game is something most people will have a great time with. You can even play it in multiplayer but I haven't tried that yet. For the price of 17 euro this game is worth every cent and the developer should be rewarded for doing such a great job. I can definitely recommend this game to everyone. I would like to thank my viewers for watching this video and for the nice things I have been told in the comment sections of my other videos in the past. It most motivates me a lot to know my work is being appreciated and I will continue to try my best and improve. I would be happy to know what you thought of the game and of my review. So if you have any comments you want to share let me know in the comment section down below. It's already greatly appreciated and it helps me stay connected with my viewers. So again thank you for watching and have a great day.